CP the franchise, a very, very popular man on YouTube. If you are a Knicks fan, you just heard that Knicks clip if you're listening on the radio. If you are a Knicks fan, I always say this, especially after losses. That's why I really enjoy it. <laughs> you can listen to CP and everyone else on Knicks Fan TV basically talk for an hour and a half after every game, which is tremendous. Yeah. So I, I do appreciate, even though I'm not a Knicks fan, I respect you guys to a degree. And I certainly like being voyeuristic, especially after you lose <laughs> and hear all the complaining and the R.J. Barrett stinks, <laughs> fire Thibodeau, he's a moron. Listen, it, it, you, you come for the doom and gloom. You, you, you like to see us down and depressed and, and the fans calling for Thibodeau's head. R.J., Julius. Comes with the territory, man. You're damn it, right. It's, it's Nick's therapy. I don't get paid enough, <laughs> but it's a passion of mine, so I love it. So, uh, no, yeah. man, I, re- I respect the hell out of it. Now, we do get a break because it's All-Star Weekend. Yep. And, you know, you mentioned it earlier. I, I feel the same way. I'm not as into it as I was when I was a kid. I am going to show my six-year-old the slam dunk contest and the three-point contest because he likes basketball just to see. Yeah. Like, does he react to it? Yeah. Now, what I'm worried about is if your boy Jericho Sims does anything too oh. cool, I can't have Jet saying, yeah. I like him. Get you might lose him. You might lose him. And I can't lose him over Jericho Sims <laughs> at the dunk contest. <laughs> All right. The one the, thing, the um, simulation, as we call him, when he has a good game on Knicks Fan TV. The one thing I'm not worried about yeah. is Julius Randle stealing him during the three point contest. And <laughs> oh, what are we doing here? Why are we putting a guy Look, who's shooting 32 percent from three in the three point contest? What are we doing? I think Sims is a better in game dunker. I think Julius is a better in game three point shooter. You mm-hmm. know, when he gets going, he gets going. I don't see him uh, beating this pack. I I give him credit for for participating. With that said, I think I'm going to go on my FanDuel app and bet on Julius. Well, yeah, what are the odds on Julius right now? (laughs) No, he's the dog of dogs in terms of the odds. Like, he is the last guy, which he should be, by the way. Yes, yes. Let me see where they're at now. And I I, really, I'm not even joking. I think I may bet on it. That's the one thing in the All-Star game I would bet on just because it's, you know, it's dopey. It's kind of fun. Uh, right now, oh, my God, you can bet on the Rising Stars tournament winner. Oh, Can I give advice to everybody? Please don't do that. <laughs> what, are, what are we doing if that's what we're doing? So the favorite is actually a tie between Dame and Buddy Heald. All okay. right? They're bo- both plus 430. Julius is plus 950. Mm. So he's the last guy on the list. It's Heald yeah. and Lillard at plus 430. Tatum and Herter both at six to one. Markin at plus six fifty. Halliburton at plus six fifty. Mm. <laughs> we know Wally Zerbiak can't <laughs> make that bet. And then you've got Tyler Hero, who didn't even play the other night. Uh, Tyler yeah. Hero doesn't have the balls to go up against the wing defenders known yeah. as the Brooklyn Nets. But guess what? Three point contest. I'm ready to go. What a flood uh, he is. He goes some load management to say, "All right, let me uh, let me jump into this contest here." <laughs> and then Julius Randle at plus nine fifty. I'm not even. I think I'm actually just just for fun. Yeah. I'm gonna bet like ten bucks. Yeah. Julius well, well, you've seen enough of him because you are a season ticket holder of the Knicks, so <laughs> you should be comfortable making. You that love bet. bringing that up. Yeah, I love it. I love it because I've never seen it before. It's outstanding. <laughs> You're a fan. It's okay. No, my, my favorite part, my favorite reaction to being a Knicks season ticket holder is not even you. It's when Dolan sat here and Craig said, hey, by the way, Evan's a diehard net fan, yeah. but he's a season ticket holder. And he looks at me and says, why? <laughs> there you go. I'm giving the there man money. Like, I'm, I'm literally <laughs> sending him money. And his response to me with, like, a disgusted look is, why? why? Yeah. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> uh, but one of the things they're going to do for the game, if you guys don't watch the game, and I don't, I don't know how many people do, First of all, they play with the Elam ending, which I'm a huge fan of. Yeah. We'll discuss that in a minute. But they draft up the teams. So the two team captains, based on the highest vote getters, will draft the team. And they've done this for a few years. The NHL absolutely had the idea first. And I remember when I saw hockey do it, my first reaction is this is better for basketball. This will be better with basketball. So they've done it the last couple of years. And apparently, and there's one guy to blame for this. And I'll, I'll reveal yeah. the name, and you'll yeah. absolutely agree with me. Mm. There was one guy who was sad. That he was picked last. He felt like Evan Roberts in middle school. He was picked last. And guess what? When I was picked last, I just smiled and played as hard as I could. That's all I did. But this guy, this loser, this quitter, picked last and then he cried about it. And so because he cried about it, Adam Silver has made one of the softest decisions he's ever made. He said, we're not going to have someone picked last. We're going to pick the reserves first. And then we'll pick the starter. So technically, the starter being picked last 
isn't really the guy being picked last because right. he was an all-star starter. Yeah. How soft is this? It's ridiculous. It's becoming a cupcake league, man. It's getting softer and softer and softer when you think about the rule changes. Now this, and I love the idea of going with the draft. So you mix up the teams every year. Yeah. The West doesn't always play the, with the West. You could mix it up. Sometimes you have LeBron and Luka. You might have LeBron and KD sometimes. So you, you mix it up a little bit and give the fans something to see because the game is not going to be that good anyway. Game stinks. Right. And yeah, we all know that. So yeah. so then they move it to, we're going to pick the teams before the game. I thought this is a great idea. Again, you keep the fans engaged. But now it, it's almost like the participation trophy. So <laughs> now, now we're going to pick the reserves first and then pick the starters. It's soft. These guys Very. are multi-millionaires. I mean, I, maybe there's one person that, that didn't like being picked last. But for me, this is something that they could have tapped into in terms of the fan engagement. Fans jump on Twitter and say, wow, I can't believe right. this guy got picked last. Here's who I would have picked. And let the debate go on. They, 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 they missed an opportunity to tap into the fans having that conversation well, on, 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 the, uh, on the picks. And here's what's crazy to me. And maybe you know because you're a diehard basketball fan. Lugie and Big Mac are also basketball fans. I'm certainly yeah. not insulting them. But I'm 100% confident they won't know the answer. Yeah. And I don't even think you know the answer. But I'll ask it anyway. Yeah. Who was picked last last year? Who was picked last last Okay, time. time out. You don't know. Yeah. I don't even want you to think about it. You're, you it don't wasn't know. Julius. It wasn't Julius Randle. I'll tell you that. It was not Julius. Yeah. Okay. You guys know who was picked last last year? We actually both looked at each other when you brought this up and said, no, I have no idea. Well, I'll tell you who was picked last yeah. because the guy who was picked last is a loser. The guy who was picked last is a quitter. And the guy who picked last, I have no information to back <laughs> this up. <laughs> this is all speculation, so don't sue me. Yeah. He cried. He called up Adam and said, it's insulting that they picked me last. Wah! And that guy's name is James Harden. So this whole thing wow. oh, is about right. James Harden being yeah. picked last last year. Wow, yeah, yeah. Now, I admit this is very likely fan fiction, yeah. okay? It's probably not true. But let's go with it. James Harden was so upset, CP, that he was picked last last year. And it was comical. I remember when it happened yeah. on TV because I think at the time Durant was a little annoyed with him. Yeah. They've made up since, obviously. Yeah. They all blew up the nets and are gone. But it was like a joke. And I think even at the end, LeBron was laughing like, oh, yeah. okay. And everybody knew they were avoiding James Harden. And I do think that LeBron purposely didn't pick Harden because he wanted Durant to have to pick him. Right. Because, dude, this was a week after the trade. That's, Something that's right. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. So do you believe my fan fiction that James Harden is such a crybaby that he called up Adam Silver and said, this is, this is. I think it has something to do with it. Thank you. I think it has something to do with it. And, and they don't want to put the, the, the last picks on the spot in front of the world to That's see right. that these are the scrubs of the All-Star team. But now I'm going to go to the last reserve and say that's the guy. Of course. Who's the last pick? If we have a half a brain, yeah. we'll still have the guy who was picked last. Yeah. The last reserve was the worst guy. And I say this as somebody with experience. As someone who's been picked last before, it ain't that big of a deal. I don't see it. It re It's just okay. I don't see it. And no one remembers. So the mm -hmm. bad publicity that comes out of it, because I do think it gets bad publicity. Yeah. Because it adds to the the idea that the NBA is a soft league. Yeah. I love yeah. the NBA, but how can I or you defend the league is not being soft yeah. when the commissioner says, we don't want someone pick last. I mean, come I, on. I, I think they missed a, an opportunity to have the, the conversation continue and have fans have that debate. Maybe fans want to have their own fantasy draft and see who goes and who doesn't go. What do you think about LeBron going to the league and asking them to honor him? At the All Star Game, well, first of all, for breaking breaking uh, Kareem's record. Okay, you've said that, and Craig has said that. Yeah, uh, is that true? That's what I'm hearing. Uh, okay, I don't know if that's true, and I'm not ripping you. I'm yeah. maybe Craig a little bit. Yeah. But I heard him say that, and I was like, I don't know if LeBron's going to the league. Maybe the league is saying, Hey, you broke the all time scoring record. We should honor you because hey, it was kind of a big deal. So I don't know if I believe this crap. I think it's LeBron slander. <laughs> I really do. Look. I would say it should happen. Of whether whether he asked or he didn't, it should happen. But I think it's a, if, he, if he did ask, I think it's a little weird. I think that we weird. all have, to varying degrees, yeah. like this dislike of LeBron James. Yeah. We all have it. It's very different than the relationship we all have with Michael Jordan, yeah. where he beat your ass, no question. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And you, that should bother you, but yeah. you have this incredible respect for him. LeBron James, and I think I know the reason why, 
is disliked by just about, sometimes small, sometimes really big. There's a dislike towards him. And here's the reason. You tell me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Because every fan base talked themselves into believing LeBron was going to save their team. Absolutely. They all thought, like even I did, how naive was I? Yeah. Oh, Jay-Z, he's going to come. <laughs> come on. He's never going to Newark. Yeah. Like, what Absolutely. Am I a moron? And maybe he was never going to the Garden. I have no idea. But I think our dislike for him is because of that. We all thought he was going to save us, and he never did. Yeah, for me, that's part of it. Especially when he was in our backyard at the Boys and Girls Club in Connecticut, right by the Knicks uh, uh, practice facility. He goes to the Miami Heat. <laughs> the, the hated Knicks rival. Pat Riley. <laughs> I hated him. As a member of the Heat, hated him. Couldn't stand him. Once he left... I started liking it. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the Cleveland winning, I, I was looking at it this way, and you're a big wrestling fan, so yeah. I think this works. Warriors-Cavs in 2016, I thought the Warriors were mostly the faces. They were the good yes. guys. Yes. Okay? Yeah. And the Cavs were the bad guys. And then Bret Hart, Stone Cold, Steve Austin happened at WrestleMania 13. For those that don't know. It's a good one. It was a double turn. Yeah. It was a great match. Brett was the good guy. Steve was the bad guy. And in the middle of the match, they used such ring psychology that they got the fans to turn. When Draymond Green outstretched his leg yeah. and played soccer, the crowd turned. Not Warrior and Cav fans, yeah. but you and I. Yeah. Like, I think most people were rooting for the Warriors. We're good. Bleep LeBron. Yeah. And then as soon as that happened and the 3-1 deficit starts to go right. away... I think the Cavaliers became the face. Easily. Easily, because, number one, it was a dirty play. You saw that. that I mean, that's that's par for the course of Draymond Green. But then the story becomes, can the Cavaliers do it? Right. Can they come back from that 3-1? And so the story just became that much more magnified. And then you go to Game 7 and the brilliant performances, Game 6 and 7, that Kyrie and LeBron put on. It was epic. So this was a, I got to compliment myself. Yeah. This was a great all-time wrestling analogy. I thought that was a good one. That was a classic WrestleMania. Thank Stone you. Stone Cold and Bret Hart, 13. Yes. I thought that was a good, uh, now, I thought that was a good. Analogy. Now here's the real good judge because Lugie hates everything I say. Yeah. Okay. He's very, very critical. Yeah. Lugie. Yeah. Is that a good analogy? That was an excellent analogy. Whoa. The greatest double turn in the history of wrestling. Yeah. What's up? So I'll give you one then. I'll come I'll come up with something later that you screwed nice. up. But nice, now nice. you get a dub. <laughs> Thank you, pal. Let's go to CB, CP's hometown. Let's go. Tommy in Rockville Center. Let's go. Wow. Who needs corn when you got <laughs> CP, baby? <laughs> My guy T Hop in the building. What's going on, bro? You already know, but yo, keep your foot down on the gas pedal, Casey. Um, listen, we gotta talk Knicks. Let's go. Uh, you're always talking about put respect on the Knicks names. The Knicks are tied for the second best road record, not only in the Eastern Conference with the Milwaukee Bucks, but the entire NBA. Put respect on their name, Casey. Yeah. That's it, man. That's it. They they are playing well on the road. They are World Warriors seventeen and twelve. And look, that you got that is a testament to the coach. It's a testament to the coach having the players ready to play in hostile environments, uh, less hostile than Madison Square Garden, you might you might think. But, you know, listen, this is this is on Brunson, it's on Randall. These guys come to play, especially look at what they did in Atlanta, a game that they needed to win and in, in terms of creeping back up into into the Eastern Conference. And they took it to the Hawks, man. Led by You're Julius only Angela. a game better on the road than the Nets. Listen. You braggadocious people. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. And two games back the Nets. But, but by and the, they're creeping up. By the way, because I've wondered this all season long. Why? Because I always hear theories about, well, there's yeah. that garden groan that puts pressure when yeah. they're playing at Madison Square Garden. And, and our last caller brings up a really, I mean, it's a fair point. The Knicks have been a really good road team. And when you look around the NBA, there are a lot of mediocre road teams. Like the Cleveland Cavaliers are four games under 500. Yeah. There was a time this year, earlier this season, it's not the case anymore, where there were like only three teams above 500 on the road. Why are they better on the road than at home? Because it doesn't really make a lot of sense. It just seems like there's just more pressure at home, man. Because because you have two things. You have the other team who's looking to, to come on that stage in Madison Square Garden and embarrass the Knicks. I mean, last year they had a number of B-level guys come out there and have career nights in Madison Square Garden. It's just a place to play. These guys want to shine on that stage, but it just amplifies the pressure on the home team to come back and... Look! Look at when the fans came back in, into the into the stands a couple of years ago. In that playoff game, the Garden was electric, and I looked at some of these guys. I was there in, in 100 section. I looked at Julius Randle, R.J. Barrett, Reggie Bullock. These guys, these guys were shell shocked. 
Hmm. When the fans were in there, they were intimidated by you. Absolutely, absolutely. You scared them. So the energy was was too much. For so them. I get what you're saying, and this yeah. actually makes a lot of sense. So the Knicks uh, embarrassed themselves in the playoffs in yeah. 2021 because Thanks. of you, because of Knicks fans. <laughs> That, that's why you guys lost. So you guys are there. It's not Trey Young. Listen. It's not Julius Randle even choking. We're exonerating him. It's you. You're it's, very intimidating. We're like the Jets fans. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. It is the trauma Dude, and the PTSD. I, we I want wins. So it's funny because I'm a Jet fan. You're not. You're a Nick fan. I'm not. <clears throat> the Jets and Knicks are very similar. Yeah. There, there's, there's no doubt that there's a... Of the two franchises in this town, if you had to take two franchises and say they're the same or they're the most similar... I don't even think it's a question. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's the Mets anymore necessarily because the Mets went to a World Series even seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And their World Series, their championship was more recent than the Knicks championship. It was 13 years later. The Jets even further. But the Jets and the Knicks, they are the same. Yeah. Like, it's... It's the the so Mets, you could, you could even say that, you know, they have a chance to contend. Oh, now they And they've they had yeah. that chance. And, and they, they just went to the to, to the World Series. But with the Knicks and the Jets, it just seems like they're always stuck in the mud. For one foot forward, they take two steps back, and they're just always treading well, in that mediocre spot. There was a time, I'd say about 10 years ago, where that comparison would annoy me. I would say it's yeah. ridiculous. The Jets, because in my lifetime growing up, after the 1-15 season with Richie Kotai, the Jets were in the playoffs every other year. Yeah. You know, they were good in 97, didn't make it. They're obviously in the title game in 98. They're in the playoffs in 01. They're in the playoffs in 02. They win the division in 02. They're in the playoffs in 04, 06, 09, 10. Like, okay, they're they're good. And I would always take a Nick comparison and say, stop. Knicks are losers. They you know, go through this drought, the Isaiah <laughs> Thomas era. Since 2010, and that is a long time now, yeah. the Knicks have been more successful. Like they're the team who make the playoffs every yeah. once in a while. Listen, so, dude, when Carmelo was here, they they made the playoffs in three years for three years. It came, just went back two years yeah. ago. So it's it's not yeah. even close anymore. Yeah. yeah. So ten years ago, I would have been offended by that. Did right. you hear, by the way, that the NBA media rights deal is up and that NBC yeah. is interested? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, baby. That takes me back, man. Hit that freaking music. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, let's go. Classics. Classics. It's game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. <laughs> Michael Jeffrey Jordan about to school the New York Knicks again. Yeah. yeah. I oh. still I, I still watch those montages on Twitter and YouTube. Dude. There's nothing like it. They they try to replicate it now on ESPN. Nah. And sometimes MSC does. It's not nah. the same, man. Dude, it's It's funny. not the same. I, be, I can see by your reaction, I feel the same way. Yeah. I No offense to ABC, no offense to ESPN, no offense to anybody. They're, they're yeah. fine. Okay, they're fine. I love Mike Breen. Mike Breen has become Breen Van Gundy, Mark Jackson. Yeah. They've become the voices of basketball. Sure. They've done it for so long. And, and even growing up, it was kind of mixed. Like, we had Bill Walton for a yeah, year. Yeah. We had Marv. Then we didn't have Marv. We had Casas. Like, it was mm -hmm. all over the place. So, Breen, Jackson, Van Gundy, they're the guys. Yeah. So, it has nothing to do with them. But, my God, I want NBC to get the NBA back just so we could hear that yeah, music. Yeah, get the song. But you hear it on college basketball on, on Fox. Doesn't work. Yeah. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. It's like it's being, you know, used in some kind of cheap way. Yeah, yeah. No offense, it's just, it's the NBA. It's yeah. 90s NBA. You, you got to bring it back. I hope they get it back. You know, oh. those, those were the days, man. And, and you would have the uh, the Miller Genuine Draft moments, right? Yes. They would do the flashback and then the Prudential Halftime Show. And, you know, they would have that interview and... In that time, when, when, when you're not in that 24-7 news cycle, that was when you got your news on players unhappy, players moving, oh, player yeah. trades, trade rumors. You would have to go to the halftime show to hear what was going on. So, sometimes, and, and that's an aspect that can never be replicated because yeah. we have Twitter, we yeah. have Woj bombs, we have shams. But that sound you just heard, if you're under the age of 30, you probably think we're very weird. And that's okay. Yeah. That's fine. That sound is the only reason why NBC should get the NBA back. <laughs> That's the only reason. Ah, I really don't care about any other reason. So, so you don't want John Tesh that to uh, to make a remix? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You can't yeah, do no, that. Yeah, no, you got to go back to the That's to, like, to the, the, you know, you can't. That's It's yeah. a sacred song. Yeah. Is yeah. there a remix that anyone listens to of New York, New York? No. No. Is there? Yeah, we don't do remix. No. When you have such a classic song, and, and kudos to John Tesh, yeah. and the fact that he's basically whored that song out now for the last few years, because yeah. you mentioned it's on Fox, AEW's used it a few times. Wow. What are we doing? I mean, uh, good yeah. for him. Make his money. Like, I I have no issue with someone making their money. But that's the NBA on NBC music. Yeah. yeah. 
So I don't know what the hell's going to happen with the media rights deal. And if Amazon gets it or Apple TV gets it, here's all I'll say to Amazon and Apple TV. If you want to make it right, buy the song. Yeah. Because that'll work. Yeah. If you want to get the NBA and then bring that in, I'm all good. Remember the big deal they made this year about the ESPN hockey song coming back? Yes. This would be... On another level. It's Which one was it? Da, na, 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 na. Yeah, that like one? the ES, because ESPN went so, I, you know what's funny? And I know the song is when I watched the first yeah. night of hockey, I was like, oh yeah, I remember that. Today, right now, I couldn't even hum it to you. <laughs> now, Man. part of that is I'm more of a basketball guy than a hockey guy. Yeah. I own yeah. that. I'm sure there's a lot of people listening who are saying, you know, I can. Mm-hmm. Good good for you guys. You guys are hockey fans. I respect that. Oh, that one, that yes. one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, as soon as you hear it, you're yeah. like, I know what that means. Yeah. It's not bad. <laughs> Do you remember, and if you could find this Big Mac, Fox had a baseball song, and then they went to the football song. They replaced the Fox baseball yeah. with the football. But the real baseball song, in fact, don't get, don't find that. Here's the one I want you to find, and this is going to be tough. When I think it was CBS had baseball. I was so young, bro, so I, it's tough mm. to even remember this. Mm. It was like early, early 90s. So I'm seven-year-old Evan. They had a song, and I'm going to hum it to you. Okay, here we go. I thought it was the greatest song ever. It rivals yeah. this. Uh, da, 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 da. And it sounded like this. Dun, wait, how did it go again? <laughs> <laughs> see, see, we'd be better off getting C back to find it. Yes, this is it. Pump it up. This is my jam. Is, is this, isn't this college football then? No, no, this was no. baseball in the early 90s. It's similar, though. Wait, yeah. It's the Atlanta Braves against okay. the Minnesota Twins, live from the Metrodome. <laughs> this one for me, all-timer. Only, yeah. Only 90 to 93, yeah. It was short. Yeah. Short. But, but I got the age right because I was, I'm telling you, it was very, very early on in my fandom of yeah. like understanding what was happening because 90 to 93, I'm 7 to 9 years old. Yeah. 7 to 10 years old. But I remember that always being such an awesome song, and then it disappeared. That one was pretty majestic. I like that. Did one. you like that? Yeah, I did like that one. Big yeah, Mac, yeah. do you remember that as a base? Because Big Mac's a baseball. Yeah, guy. I do. You remember I, that? I didn't know what you were talking about when I heard it. I do remember. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Thank God you found it because I couldn't even hum it. <laughs> yeah. I was worried about myself. I was like, "What the hell happened to me?" <laughs> oh boy, Carden Roberts here on the fan. Did Tiger Woods really need to apologize? We'll address what he did. And if he did apologize, well, spoiler alert, he did. We'll get to that coming up. Carton and Robert, CP, the franchise, sitting in as we are here until 6.30 tonight. And if you want to believe it, we'll give you all the, the background info so you can decide, has come out about Aaron Rodgers. It is Carton and Roberts. Craig is off. CP, the franchise, sitting in. And we were talking earlier about Rodgers, and I, I've made it very clear. I want him. I want to go all in. I think it gives the, the, gives the Jets the best chance to win. So this Bob McGinn has covered the Packers for a very long time. And he was on the podcast with Tyler Dunn, golongtd.com, to give him a plug because at some point he probably listened to the whole thing. But we'll give you a little synopsis here. According to McGinn, the Packers are done with Aaron Rodgers. He's not coming back. They're disgusted with him. They're done with him. They're moving on. McGinn says he's totally convinced Rodgers won't be back as the starter. But, uh, and this has been transcribed by Pro Football Talk to give them credit. Boosting the belief that Rodgers will be gone. Rodgers will be gone, as McGinn explained it. The team fully believes in Jordan Love, and the team is ready to turn the page after trading up and drafting Jordan Love. McGinn predicts, this, this makes me laugh, by the way, if Rodgers insists on returning, he'll be the backup to Jordan Love. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> on what planet is that? Yeah, yeah that's never happened. He goes on to say, it's not just one person in the Packer organization. McGinn said the entire power structure is done with Rodgers. The CEO, Mark Murphy, done with him. Goon Scoons, the GM, done with him. Coach Matt LaFleur, done with him. And here's why, and we have to take heat on this, because this is why they're quote-unquote done with him, again, according to a reporter. They think he's not working hard anymore. They think he showed up for 2022, not in the best possible shape, and then he blew off the offseason program. Huh. Now, is your reaction to say, wow, yay, he's available, but boy, I don't want that because I believe that stuff's true? You got to take it with a grain of salt, right? But if it is true, it's a buyer beware situation. Oh, no doubt. It's a buyer beware situation. And I just feel like as a guy, 
He's 39 years old. He's won a ring already, multiple MVPs. What is there left for Aaron Rodgers to prove? How hungry is he? And when he comes out of that cave, how is he going to be rejuvenated to go out there and grind for 17 games, off-season program, get in early with a Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore mm-hmm. and Brees Hall, get in, get on the same page with those guys. Yes, Nathaniel Hackett is his is former offensive coordinator. It's there. But I just want to know upstairs. It's it's not about the physical tools. We know Aaron Aaron Rodgers is still an elite quarterback in this league. But mentally, is he ready for that? And also, is he ready for the pressure to try to bring the, the Jets to it to, to be? An, I hate center? to compliment Tom Brady because he makes me sick. But does he have Tom Brady in him? Because right. Tom Brady was motivated to kill. That's right. He was motivated to win until the bitter end. It's yeah. how he was able to win another championship at the age he was at. So there's a couple of things that jump out at me about this. Obviously, it's fair to worry yes. because, like you said, if Aaron Rodgers doesn't take it serious anymore, that's a problem. Right. And buyer beware 100%. But I have seen organizations like the bad mouth guys on the way out. I've yeah. seen it a lot. Yeah. I've seen it a lot in Boston. I've seen it a lot here. I mean, I saw basically the Nets do that with Kyrie Irving, even yeah. though they're probably right. Yeah. Like, that's a common thing. I saw this with DeGrom, by the way. I think that there was a lot of – Let's throw it out there that he, you know, never wanted to be here. And he didn't say hi to certain people walking the halls. Like, this is a common thing in sports where when a guy is gone, you badmouth him on the way out. And from a football standpoint, I could see why Green Bay would say, you know what, let's move on. We've won with him. We're probably not going to win again. We invested a pick in Jordan Love. It's better for us. We appreciate everything Aaron did. Maybe this stuff isn't even true. We just want to move on but we want our fans to be on our side right. when we move on. That's very possible, and yeah. that's why I read it, I listen to it. I'm not saying all this isn't true. I don't know, yeah. but I do have a skeptical ear about yeah. it. I, I do get that, but in, in like in the DeGrom example, DeGrom is a free agent, right? But in, in this, this Packers situation, they want to trade Aaron Rodgers. So wouldn't they want to, if they're going to do that and, and want to save face and have the positive PR, wouldn't they want to do that after they trade him right. they wouldn't to the wanna, highest bidder. They wouldn't want to hurt his value in right. the process. A very right. fair point. Yeah, like That kind of thing could backfire. Yeah. You want to badmouth the guy once he's gone. When, he, when he's gone. <laughs> I, I saw that when Phil Jackson was here with Carmelo Anthony. Yes. Remember with, with his uh, quote-unquote friend yes. that would air out the dirty laundry through the New York Post and, and talk bad about Carmelo Anthony. And I'm saying this is counterproductive. How are you trying to trade the guy but then talk about you know how lazy he is? He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. A, a leopard doesn't change his spots. I wonder if this kind of story would even affect the Raiders and Jets, that the interest would just be the same. Like, hey, he's Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. You know, we'll take all that risk that comes with it. Look, you mentioned this earlier, so it's it's absolutely fair, and it was before this even came out. We have to make sure he wants it. Like, he wants it. He wants to win. He cares about it, that he wouldn't be coming to the Jets or the Raiders to just cash a check, you know, get a lot of attention, and go home. Right. That he has some kind of burning desire to win a championship. Because, quite frankly, it's been a long time. That's right. To the point where Aaron Rodgers' reputation is going to be Hall of Fame quarterback, incredible talent. Boy, a guy did not win enough. That's, yeah, that's going to be the view on him. Only one. Only one. Only one. And l- luckily for him, he got it done so early that right. he never faced the Marino pressure of he's never won one. Right. It was more he only won once. And he had a good enough teams to win multiple times. Yeah. But this is concerning, sure, but also exciting. <laughs> I got to be, I, I, it's exciting. <laughs> because if Bob McGinn is right, all right? Now, Bob McGinn yeah. also said he's citing his own instincts and his knowledge of the league. <laughs> and, and also discussion with someone who has firsthand knowledge of the Packers. So it's not just a gut feeling. It's yeah. not just an intuition. He's talking yeah. to somebody. Um, means he's available. Yeah. It means there are four possibilities with Aaron Rodgers. Number one is he retires. That's not happening. Mm -hmm. Number two is he comes back to the Packers, which I think we all thought back of our mind could very well happen. Option number three, he's traded somewhere not named the Jets. And option four is he wears that beautiful green jersey (laughs) and he comes to New Jersey. I didn't mean to do that, but yes. So we potentially get to eliminate one thing right off the top. He ain't going back to Green Bay. I, and I he's also he's not retiring. No, no. So that means, ladies and gentlemen, 50-50 shot? I say 40-60? Uh, it, uh, it could be a bidding war between Mark Davis and Woody Johnson. <laughs> Which is Who scary. wants to crater their organization more? A bald Mark Davis. <laughs> right. Have you seen what he did? He took all the hair off. 
He said, I've had a... Is that, by the way, is that a real picture? Have we discovered if that was real or not? As far as I know, it's real. Oh, it is real. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because you could easily Photoshop those things. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I was just hoping he doesn't look like one of those, like, Disney monks. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, that the way you frame it as, this could be a bidding war between two just ridiculously awful yeah. owners. Yeah. It's kind of scary. Yeah. It's a bidding war between who, who Mark Davis more, and Woody Johnson. <laughs> Oh, that's an ugly, ugly thing. Ugly, ugly thing. Let's go to Artie in Brooklyn. Artie, what's shaking, buddy? So, Ev, you go from you go from the Nets getting Kyrie and Durant, and then that happening, and then possibly getting Rodgers. Yeah. And I'm making a com- comparison. That's fine. Listen, because if it doesn't work out with it, it didn't work out with the Nets, you get these callers calling up saying, "I knew it." I think I only know one person, Gio, who didn't really like the move of getting Durant and uh, Well, and Gio, Gio's point, in fairness to him, and I remember talking to him off air about it, was he wanted Kevin Durant and he would take Kyrie Irving. When Durant got hurt, and a lot of people had this view where they changed, Beningo did. Joe wanted Durant. As soon as Durant got hurt, Gio, uh, Joby as well, said, I don't want to deal with yeah, this. It changed. It changed. changed. I don't know. Did that change for you? Changed for me, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, I, and by the way, I totally respect that. But I guess my question to you already is, you're concerned about people making fun of us after it doesn't work? Is that really no, your reason? No, I'm not. But I, I, here's the thing, okay? I, there's no way you could create, as a Jets fan, there's no way you could criticize if we get Rodgers. There's no way you could say it was a bad move. The only, the, the only thing is, what if we don't get him, what is the move? And to me, I think it just makes sense that you get Jimmy G because he's got that connection with San Francisco. But here, you got to back it up. Yes. Not only do you have to get Jimmy G, but you got to get a, a legit backup. Why not get Jimmy G and Tannehill or uh, Mayfield wow. in here? That combo is yeah, but, not Rodgers, but it's kind of – Well, okay. I, I, can, I can live with that. Well, a couple what of things. Got- Ryan Tannehill's not coming here as a backup. Yeah, yeah. Like, if the, first of all, the Jets aren't going to trade for Ryan Tannehill. If the Titans decide to move on, which I'm just using logic here, they are, he's a free agent candidate. Baker may feel free agent candidate. Baker's a little bit different. Baker may not be guaranteed a starting job anywhere. I think it's more likely that Baker gets a compete for the job situation. Tannehill's getting a starting quarterback job. Like, he just is. Yeah. So, I totally get the concern about Garoppolo's health, but the backup market is not going to include Ryan Tannehill. Yeah. The backup market is Tyrod Taylor with the Giants, who I thought was a great signing last year because he is the kind of backup where he's a he's a high quality backup. That's what he is. Like yeah. you don't want him starting for your team, but you can't have a starter as your backup. Like that doesn't happen in the modern NFL yeah. anymore. Yeah, Tan- Tannehill's not going for that. He, no. He's definitely going to be a, as going in as a starter. Um, I would I would have liked to have asked already his opinion on Carr. I was surprised that he went with Jimmy G and Tannehill. Yeah, I guess the two I, options. Yeah, you know what? That's a fair point. I didn't get that. That's a yeah. fair question. As far as Rodgers is concerned, and the comparison of the failure of KD and Kyrie, yeah, it sucks that I'm made fun of. Like, no question. Yeah. It sucks that guys are dancing on my grave or net fans' grave. Okay? I'm not saying it's fun. That's not why I'm upset. Like, no offense. You or anyone else making fun of the net failure is not keeping me up at night. What keeps me up at night is that they failed. Right. That's what keeps me up, that it did not work. But I would do it again. It's a risk you have to take. So to bring that up as an example is just proof that I'm living by my word, which is, and I said this last week with Craig, I said it with you today, and I think you understand, I would sign KD and Kyrie all over again. Yeah. I would take the risk again. And that may just sound like tough words from me, but they're not because I'm doing almost the same thing, I guess, with Aaron Rodgers, yeah. where you have to take that swing. And if it doesn't work, I don't care about the guy who calls in and says, I told you so. Right. That's not a reason to not make a move because yeah. you're afraid of CP the franchise <laughs> making fun of your <laughs> basketball team. I mean, listen, I, I love the demise of the Nets, but as as you said, it's a move that you have to make. I would make it uh, 10 out of 10 times if that was the Knicks because, to me, the NBA is the hardest league to to uh, field the championship team and win it. Yeah. So I'd, I'd do it 10 times out of 10. Now, it didn't work. Uh, you guys are now two games above the Knicks in the in the fifth spot. We're three up in the loss column, by the way, okay. just to be so, clar- clerical. So we have one Clar- more one more game that, uh, you know, once we beat you in that game, we'll be well on our way, and, and we're looking for that fifth spot. <laughs> 
and you may get it. Five spot is a sweet spot for the Knicks. <laughs> no, I get that. And if it comes over, you know, stepping over the Nets on the way, I'd be very, very happy. What if Cleveland collapses and maybe you get the four, or I get the four, and the other guy gets the five, and then all of a sudden that would be outstanding. We got ourselves a little best of seven. That would be outstanding. The battle for New York. Or Playoffs. there's a, there's another possibility. Yeah. Uh, you guys start struggling because yeah. that's what you do. Yeah. And we start struggling because, well, that may be what we do. And let's say Miami gets hot. Let's say Atlanta gets hot. Washington's been playing a lot better recently. Yeah. And we're in the 7-8 game. What up? Playing stakes. What up? Oh, man. The battle for mediocre now. <laughs> yes. Oh, the battle to get destroyed yeah, the by the The battle to the slaughterhouse. That's <laughs> exactly Who's what on is. the conveyor belt? Uh, oh, look, man. I totally get the Kyrie Aaron Rodgers thing and the concern going in. Yep. But you got to give yourself the best chance to win. These are warning signs, by the way. Absolutely. And I acknowledge that. Like, I, I, Bob McGinn, I did quick research on him. He's a respected reporter. I don't yeah. think he's making crap up. Yeah. And to Rogers' point, because Aaron Rodgers used to say, and he said it the other day with McAfee, anything you hear about me is not coming from me. And I believe him. Right. Right. I believe he has a tight inner circle. So not that Ian Rappaport is making stuff up. Ian Rappaport just has sources that maybe are not as yeah. tied in to Aaron Rodgers as he thinks. Yeah. Maybe it's coming from the team. May- well, that's the. this is not coming from Rodgers. Right. This is coming from the team. Right. And that's a little different. Like, Aaron Rodgers can't deny it. And the other thing that's interesting to me is listening to Aaron a lot, because I told you earlier, I'm a Rodgers-ologist. Yeah. Listen to a lot of his interviews with Pat McAfee trying to figure this guy out. Mm-hmm. And one thing about him is he cares what people say about him, it, the media specifically. Mm-hmm. Like, he Google names himself. Mm-hmm. He's got one of, Craig does this too, he has his name on Google alerts when there's a news article written about him. <laughs> oh, did I reveal a secret, Craig? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, that was very predictable. <laughs> I heard after today's Newsday article, CP the franchise has yeah. his name on Google Alerts. Sh- shout out to Neil Best, man. It was a great, great read. It was great a very, read. very good stuff. Yeah. I-, I bet you you're like, oh, this is cool. there's a story on me? Let me go check this out. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers probably does that. He knew what Schefter says about him. He knows what Rappaport says about him. He's going to know about this story when he gets out of the darkness yeah. retreat. Yeah. And he's going to either be really, really pissed at McGinn and say, what a clown, he knows nothing, or more likely... He's going to call up Goonskoons, the GM, because I don't want to try to say his last name. And he's going to say, what's going on, bro? And he's going to be pissed. Like, it's one of those things where yeah. Rodgers is a – he cares what things are said. And he's going to hear this story. And if there wasn't dissension between him and the Packers, get your popcorn <laughs> ready. Grease in, the, grease in the wheels. Let's see what's going on. Let's go. Dom and Tom's River. What's going on, Dom? Hey, so I was reading a I was reading a Bleacher Report article earlier today. It was the top twenty five, or it was the top free agents under the age of twenty five. Yes. Number one was Daniel Jones. Now they did where they're predicting each player to go. Right. They had Daniel Jones going to Evans, New York Jets. <laughs> Evan, what do you think about that? And what do you think the Giants would do in that situation? Because by the way, I will say I'm a diehard Giants fan. I don't think Shane would ever let that happen. But just out of curiosity, what do you think, Evan? Well, okay, first of all, I I don't think Joe Shane cares about the Jets. So I think Joe Shane, just, just a prediction here, I don't think Joe, Sa- Sh- Joe Shane would say, ooh, the Jets can't let that happen. I, I think if there's a number that he's not willing to go to, A, they could just franchise tag him. Obviously, that ends the whole thing. Or he's going to say, hey, that's too much. We're going to let you go. So I don't believe that there's a Jet Giant thing as of yet. So here's my concern, and I want to be respectful to you and Daniel Jones. Yes. I think he's really good. I think he had a really good season, proved guys like me wrong, proved you wrong. He stayed healthy. They unlocked how good he is with his legs. I thought he was mostly accurate. He never turned the ball over. He had one of the lower interception percentages in the league. He didn't fumble the ball. He was really, really good. I am scared to death of Daniel Jones on the Jets because I don't know what he is without Brian Dayball. And so that could be construed as some kind of knock on Jones or it's the ultimate compliment of Dayball. But I saw a Jet coaching staff, and I know it's different, Nathaniel Hackett's the new OC. They didn't exactly do the greatest job on lacking Zach Wilson. Is some of it on Zach? Sure. I'm sure a lot of it is. So I'm skeptical of Jones because his track record is with Brian Dayball as Frankenstein fixing him. Yeah. And I don't know if he's that guy if he comes to my team. Yeah, it's a fair point. As I said earlier in the show, I think he's more valuable to the Giants than to any other team because of that relationship with, with Brian Dable and being being able to execute and uh, and and excel in that offense a little bit. So yeah, I don't I don't see Shane uh, uh, being 
you know, so leery or scared to lose him to the Jets. I do wonder if Mara would. Yeah, well, that would, that, would John Mara. Yeah, I be okay with that. I think it would if they weren't going to franchise him. Because one of the things about this Jones discussion is they always have that in their back pocket. Yeah, and it's not the craziest thing in the world, especially when you look at the tag number. It's thirty-two million. I miscalculated this one badly because about four months ago, when we started to think about this, my initial thought was no way they tag him makes no sense. But as you move closer and Jones put more pelts on the wall and you see what the tag number is and you see what the market is for him, yeah. I got to be honest, I was dead wrong about that. Tagging him is not crazy, yeah, right? So I think one avenue that Shane and the Giants could go down is, uh-oh, there's a lot of interest in him. Let's just tag him. Let's call it a day. He's here on the tag. Let's see him prove it again. Yeah. And then we'll give him a long-term deal. So I think that's an easy way out. But you're right. Like John Mara could look at the Jets as, you know, basically the way the Yankees and Mets look at each other. I guess the Knicks and Nets to a degree. I'm not sure how much they stare at each other like that. But would that piss you off? Like, you're a Giant fan. <sighs> Daniel Jones signs with the Jets tomorrow. Well, it can't happen tomorrow, but you know what I mean. March 17th. What are you doing? Not really. Not really. Wouldn't bother you? Not really. Because, as, as I said, I think he still has another layer to get to. This is not like Aaron Rodgers in his prime going to the, over, over to the Jets. Right? Daniel Jones still has more work to do, right? We just talked about right. 15 touchdown passes last year. He, he still has another level to get to. I think the franchise tag will make more sense. Have him prove it one more year. We'll get you some more weapons. Show us a little bit more if you can get us a little bit farther with what you have. And then with the Rodgers market, with Carr entering free agency, there could be teams that, you know, based on them losing these guys, may look at a Daniel Jones. So I think the franchise tag makes sense for the Giants. Yeah, losing him, and, and I think a part of why, and I totally get it, why Giant fans don't want to lose Daniel Jones is the alternative. The alternative right. is not great. It's not great at all. It's basically a discussion we've had about the Jets who are gung-ho on adding a quarterback. Everybody knows it. Woody's basically said it. They're going to add a veteran quarterback. If the Giants lost Daniel Jones, or they tagged and dealt him, whatever they decided to do with Daniel Jones where he's not the quarterback – it almost, to me, would make more sense, as depressing as it is, to draft a young guy and not go down the hole of, hey, let's bring in Ryan Tannehill. Right. Let's bring right. in Derek Carr. Let's bring in all those names we're talking about with the Jets because I don't think the Giant roster, as much success as they had this year, and they had a great year, utmost respect to them. I don't think they're as close. Too many pieces. So you would probably, if you lost Daniel Jones... Yeah. You're drafting somebody. You got to go back to scratch. Yeah. You got to start over. Which you is start over. which is so scary. Yeah. Like who the hell wants to do that? Right. It feels like we've done so much of that, especially with the Jets, but even with the Giants and drafting Daniel Jones. It's such a lonely existence. I know this firsthand. When you start watching tape of kids from college and you try to prognosticate what they're going to be in the NFL. CP, I've done it a lot in my I'm life. I'm sure. I'm sure. It is the worst <laughs> feeling in the world. Yeah. Like, what am I doing? I'm watching. What am I watching? Yeah. How, how was the uh, Kellen Clemens tape? I mean, we took a look at that. <laughs> oh, it was, it was great. Let's go down the line. I love, and one thing I, t I totally admit is I love football. But I watch tape of kids in college, just college football games. Yeah. And I watch Jason White at Oklahoma. And I'm like, that's an NFL player. Meanwhile, he's not an NFL player. Yeah, yeah. And the one thing I did feel right about is I remember when Lamar Jackson was drafted well after Josh mm -hmm. Allen, Josh Rose, and all that. I remember asking on the air to Beningo, I said, Joe, I ain't a scout. Why is Lamar Jackson not going number one overall? Yeah, yeah. Like, he's really good. Right. We're seeing it, and yet the scouts didn't think that. Now, they pretty much got that one sort of wrong, because I, I think Josh Allen's probably the number one guy out of that class. I think yeah. he's past Lamar, but Lamar's number two, clearly. Yeah. It's ahead of Sam Darnold. Definitely. It's ahead of Baker Mayfield. So the other depressing part is you watch all these kids in college, and you, you think to yourself, what am I not seeing? That guy looks awesome. Why isn't he the number one overall pick? Did you see anything from Zach Wilson? I mean, yeah, we all did. Like, he, he's great. He's got yeah. great highlights. Yeah, he throws yeah. the ball a million yards. Okay, he's, he's a great athlete. This is why I'm so done with this, bro. Yeah. Because I did watch Zach Wilson. It's hard, man. And I talked it's myself tough. into this guy's the second coming, and it's like, oh, jeez. Complete meltdown. Here we go again. It's a long list of quarterbacks, and that, that's why and it makes a lot of sense, even if it's not the smartest thing why the Giants are probably like 95% likely have to. to just run it back with you Daniel Jones. It's cost of doing business, man. You, you have to. Yes. Brock in Huntington. How are you, Brock? Hey, gentlemen. How's it going today? Good, man. How you doing? Good. Not bad at all, man. I'm just, you know, you mentioned Zach Wilson. He's getting me mad now thinking about him because now he's got us considering things like Derek Carr, and I just don't want Derek Carr, man. The mediocrity, just this guy. 
I'm sure he's a great person. It's just his career. He's used to losing. If we're going to go that route, you know, I'd rather have Jimmy G. But like you said, I think in the darkness, that darkness is going to turn to green mm. for Aaron Rodgers. And he's going to start to drop. We're going to start to see that jet green come through in the darkness. And when he comes out, <laughs> before you know it, He'll be throwing those 35-yard darts off his back it's, foot. It's, all it's over Fireman Ed dragging him out of the cave. We <laughs> <Yes>. need you. <laughs> That's the dream. He comes out That's of this in dream. four days, and he hears the whispers. <laughs> he hears Barbara Streisand. He's a big fan of Babs. Yeah. By the way, I, I did not realize this. I did a little research on Barbara Streisand because all I know about Barbara Streisand is that my mom loves her, and I bought my mom and dad Streisand tickets years ago, and they were very, very expensive. Wow. That's what I know about Barbara Streisand. Wow. So Craig the other day says, spell Barbara. I'm like, well, that's easy. Yeah. B-A-B-A-R-A. I yeah. say, spell Barbara. Yeah. He's like, no, it's Barbara. B-A-R-B-R-A. And I looked it up because Craig's, you know, sometimes BSs me. Yeah. And, he, and he ends up fooling me because sometimes I'm the <laughs> village idiot. So I looked this up and her real name is Barbara and she changed it to Barbara as a stage name. Wow. True story. Now, I don't know why. Yeah. I'm sure that we have a 92-year-old listener who will call up very soon and say, here's the reason why she yeah. did it. And if you're out there, uh, we'll let you in. Or it, you, just tell Lugie off air. Usually the stage name is completely different than your government name. Right. Your government name isn't CP. Right. It's right. short for, can I, can I reveal that? Yeah, or is Casey. that a secret? Casey. It's Casey. That's it. And it makes yeah. sense, CP. Yeah. And your last name starts with the letter P. So it's <laughs> like, there you go. That's it. <laughs> but uh, what, what's the reason? About, why did she go Barbara to Barbara? Yeah. Like, what the hell am I missing? Uh, that, that, that's a mystery, man. I, I usually get every answer on Twitter because there's always somebody listening that knows something. Is Cher named Cher? Uh, I don't think there's so. There's no way, but now I'm looking there's at There's no chance. Cher's real yeah. name. All right. Here we go. Uh, this, one, this one makes sense. Okay. Sherilyn. Okay. So uh, Chop it. Yeah. Go, go short. Her last name is Sarkeesian. Wow. How about that? Wow. Now, what's Madonna's name? Uh, I forgot what her name is. Uh, but is this true? I'm looking up Madonna's name, and it's supposedly Madonna. No. <laughs> nah, come on. No, I didn't. No, no, no. It was something else. It's Ma I'm reading Madonna Louise Cioni. Or Cioni. Oh. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing it. What's Italian that? name. Yeah. So is Louise the middle name? Or is Madonna, or is, was it Louise, and then she created Madonna, right. and then maybe they legally changed her name? Uh, that's what I think. That's Meta legally World Peace style. Her name. Right, right. Huh. Yeah, I don't know anymore. But why the heck would Barbara Streisand go from Barbara to Barbara? Barbara. From what I'm reading, she just took the extra A out because she didn't like her original name. <laughs> but she kept the name. She just changed the spelling. So that doesn't make a ton of sense. What? And I'm going uh, off of Wikipedia, which is, you know, some dude in his basement. Right, that's right. In there, so. <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense. Bar she didn't like Barbara, so she said Barbara. Chop it from there. Cut it off. Huh. What could I? Can I do that? What can I can become like? <laughs> Evan and just go just I-N go instead of A-N? Evan Robert, you can be. Yeah. Evan Robert. Or just change it to Ev. Yeah. Or Van Roberts. Or Van. Yeah. Van Roberts. Van Roberts. That's actually a badass name. Yeah, like that. yeah. It's Van Roberts. Van on Roberts the fan. on the fan. That's almost a wrestler name. That's probably an AEW wrestler. If I change my name to Van Roberts, would people just assume I'm a good athlete, or is that ship sailed? No, that ship is long, long since sailed. Oh, it's gone? Yeah, 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 yeah can't yeah, find yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, we'll see tonight when I'm <laughs> beating my wife <laughs> in pickleball. When you're a pro pickleball player, you can go by Van Roberts. I mean, Roberts. you're probably a good bowler, right? You can bowl. I'm at, well, the, the bowling thing is weird. So back in the day, like my high score is 211. I love wow. it. I'm very excited about yeah. it. But I wasn't really that good. I, I more hit like 165, yeah, kind of in that range. Yeah. But I haven't done it in a long time. So if I went tomorrow with you guys, I'd probably bowl like a 90 in game one. I would yeah. just assume because I haven't done it in a long time. Yeah. You got that 211, and then they took the bumpers out, and then you got a 65. <laughs> Let's be real. They didn't want to make you feel bad, and they made you think that it was always there, Ev. Yeah. But your parents put the bumpers in so you had to get a higher score. First of all. <laughs> I was a senior in high school on that Thursday afternoon with Chad, my BFF back in the day, <laughs> and there were no parents around. We were at Woodmere Bowling Lanes. Oh, that's a nice one. That's no. a good one. Rockville Center was better. Totally disagree. You with me. At Rockville Center, it was better. RVC was better. In Woodmere's fact, Woodmere's all right. It's not bad. Uh, I, you know what? We would go to Woodmere on Thursday afternoons just to bowl. Okay. When we would go out to try to meet the ladies, yeah. we'd go to Rockville Center. 
You go to RVC? Oh, we would. I did. Swear wow. to God. Wow. We did Midnight Pin or whatever the yeah, hell they yeah, had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the color, with different, with the different color pins. Yeah. Right spoiler nice. alert. And this is a knock on me, and it's a knock on Chad. Yeah. Never met anybody. <laughs> Not lying to you. But we went out there. We were in the game every <laughs> single night, but here's the good news. I'm happily married. Yeah. Chad's happily married. We got both beautiful kids. So who cares that when we were 17, we were gigantic losers? Because <laughs> we're the winners now, aren't we? Oh, uh, yeah. We'll get more of your calls on all this. Aaron Rodgers, apparently the Packers hate him, and they want him off the team immediately. Plus, if you're actually going to watch the celebrity basketball game tonight, there is one celebrity that I am so curious to watch. We'll hit on it coming up. CP, the franchise in for Craig. 